Sean is a good friend of mine. Sean opened his home to me. Sean gave me whiskey. Sean gave me automatic weapons. Sean gave me explosives. Sean is sometimes not the brightest of men. <laughs> However, Sean did run many years ago in a different industry, a multi-million dollar turnover business, and then he fucked up. And everything went completely nipples north. However, Sean has since turned his pain, the things that went wrong, into a multi-million dollar business with videos that get tens of millions of views organically. He's done this with your grandson, zero Facebook ads. If any of you know me, I fucking hate Facebook ads. So, Sean is going to be talking to you about how he turned his bullshit, his drama, into a tribe of raving fans, a glorious bit, and how to turn your mess into your message. Please put your hands together for Sean Whalen. Everybody likes free shit, right? Sorry to bring enough free shit for everybody, but uh, to those of you who got a shirt, congratulations. Wow, this is, this is an absolutely spectacular, amazing event. The last time I got into a ring, most of you probably don't know this, but I've had five MMA fights. So the last time I had a guy 15 feet away from me ready to rip my fucking face off and kick me in the, in the who knows what, you know what I mean? So it's kind of different not having anybody in the ring right now, but uh, thank you, Dan. Genuine, genuinely appreciate you, bro. Um, he and I have shot lots of guns together. The big problem is that I don't have any with me because England doesn't like my guns and I feel naked walking around the streets without having my arsenal of weapons. But that's a different story for a different day. So here's a question for you guys before we get started. How many of you are on Facebook? By raise of hands, raise your fucking hands. Come on, let me see them. Who's on Facebook? Okay, cool. How many of you use Facebook for business and personal use? Business and or personal use? Raise your hands, let me see your hands. Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. Damn, they're damn near everybody. How many of you have seen, commented on, liked, or said, fuck that guy, on one of my posts? One of my videos or one of my posts. Holy shit, that's crazy. It's mind bending. Social media is fucking mind bending, is it not? I mean, think about this. Five years ago, it didn't even exist. Facebook wasn't even real. Think about what's happened in the last five years on communication. How we communicate with our customers, our clients, how we communicate with our friends and our family. The question I have for you guys, and what I wanna talk about is, what are you communicating? Okay, so let me start, let me tell you a little bit of a story. So, a couple years ago, a few years ago, I decided to burn my entire world to the ground. Now, I'm not really sure that I have a definition yet of what like a midlife crisis is, but imagine a midlife crisis when a dude just totally loses his fucking mind. I was that guy. I had a multi-million dollar business, I had 170 employees, we were doing 25 million a year in sales. We were one of the largest real estate investment companies in the Western United States. I had a 10 year marriage, I had three kids, I had a big huge house, Rolexes, cars, the whole fucking deal, and I walked away from all of it. I don't know why. Not sure that I'm ever gonna find out the real true nature of that question, but I know that it had to happen. In order for me to be where I am today, that had to happen. You are who you are today because of the choices and decisions you made yesterday, are you not? Good or bad, doesn't fucking matter. You are who you are right now because of all of the shit, good and bad, correct? 
So I spent about two years with my head up my ass, feeling sorry for myself, blaming my ex-wife for the problem in the marriage, blaming my business partners, blaming everybody for everything. I didn't believe in coaching. I thought coaching was total bullshit. I was like, look, I was a multimillionaire at 26. What the fuck are you gonna teach me, right? Anybody ever had a little bit of pride? Thought they knew everything? Nobody? You've never, you've never been prideful? You've been prideful, right? Raise your fucking hand. If I ask you a question, will you please do me a favor and answer? So when I say when you raise your hand, will you raise your hand? We all, are we all on board with that? Great, thank you. I was struggling. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. Anybody ever had this experience, gentlemen? Gentlemen, fuck. Look, at, look around. Actually, guys, stand up. Instead of you raising your hand, stand up if you know what the hell I'm talking about. Damn near the whole fucking room. Look around. Think about this, fellas. But we're, but what? But, but, dude, nobody knows. Nobody knows how bad I hurt, right? Nobody fucking knows. I'm an island. No one has any clue how big of a bitch she was. No, no, no. Your divorce, cool. Mine was fucking crazy. No, you don't understand how bad it was, right? Okay, you can sit down. So what, what do we, what do we just uncover here? How much of an island are you? But what do you do? You did the same shit that I do. Blame everybody else for the problems. Right? It's easy to do. And so what happened was, I was banging my head against the wall over and over and over and over again. And that's the definition of what? Insanity. And I started to go insane. I moved out of a 9,000 square foot house into a one bedroom condo. I was just fucking miserable, I was angry. I was like angry at everybody, I was angry at the world, the whole deal. Until one day I was like, okay, something's gotta change. And my buddy, who was a coach and a mentor, had this really cool men's program and rah, 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 the whole thing. I'm like, look bro, like, it's not working what I'm doing. He's like, are you ready? I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm ready for, but yeah, let's do this. Because I knew that the result that I was getting was shit. So I knew that I didn't know what to do. That's really hard for a dude who made multiple millions of dollars by the age of 26. That's really hard for a dude who could walk in and spend $10,000 on a watch and buy $100,000 cars, am I correct? A little bit of pride, a little bit of arrogance, a little bit of ego. You guys know what I'm talking about? So here's the, here's the interesting thing. I realized through this discovery and this journey that I went on, something massively powerful that completely changed my world, okay? Like, I was li like my divorce was insane. Like, I was so angry. I was just, a, I was an asshole. I was just a flat out asshole. How many times have you called yourself an asshole lately, <laughs> fellas? Probably not, right? When somebody calls you an asshole and you're like, what? What, right? I was just an asshole. And what happened was, when I went through my meltdown, I literally got rid of everything. Like up to that point, I had flipped almost 3,700 individual single family homes. We were literally one of the largest home flippers in America. But dude, I went through a bankruptcy and I went through a divorce and it was public. Why? Because one of my companies was making millions of dollars and the other one was losing millions of dollars and I just couldn't deal with it. Literally one day at 8 a.m. in the morning, I went to a bankruptcy hearing and at noon, I had a photo shoot for a magazine cover. It was insane. My brain, was, I was juggling. You guys juggled before? You guys know what I'm talking about? Home, family, kids, job, mortgage, craziness. Does this sound familiar? I just decided to quit fucking juggling. And a lot of the balls crash to the ground. So what's fascinating is as I'm going through this experience, I'm sitting down with this coach, this mentor, and he's like, look, here's the deal, bro. No matter what you've done, you've still flipped more homes than most Americans ever have or ever will. I'm like, dude, you don't get it. Like, look at the newspaper articles. They called me a fraud. They said I ripped people off, blah, 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 because I lost $12 million on a real estate deal. And then all of a sudden, something in my mind changed. I was like, well, that's kind of true. And then he shared something with me. We came up and we coined this phrase that has forever changed my life that I want to share with you. He's like, dude, like, you created a huge mess. Cool. Great. As we've discovered, so have all of you. Right? 
Who has never created? How many of you have created a mess before? How many of you have ever dealt with some drama and some bullshit and you've done really stupid shit in your life? Right. But no one knows. No one knows how hard it is, right? I kept telling myself all this shit. We came to the realization and uncovered the fact that my mess was my message. How did I discover this? How did I figure this out? After a year and a half, literally, I would, I, the only way I could communicate with my ex-wife was through lawyers. I couldn't talk to her, I couldn't text her, I couldn't call her, I couldn't email her. I had to literally email a lawyer who would then email her lawyer to figure out if we could like switch times to pick up the kids. Like that's how fucking insane it was. It was nuts. What happened was, I realized that I was the cause of everything. Like good, bad, up, down, left, right. Like there's no more buts. I took the word but out of my equation, out of my vocabulary. She did this, so I did, right? Isn't that what we do, guys? Isn't that what we do? My business partner did this, so I did this. She said this, so I said that, right? Isn't this how we're reactionary creatures? And for the first time in my world, in my space, I realized like I was like the root of all of it. It doesn't matter what she did or didn't do or he did or didn't do or the market did or didn't do. I made my choices, I made my bed and I had to lay in it. And I realized for the very first time like, this is all me. And so one night, after six months of working with my ex-wife to try and get to a point where we could even talk, this was like pivotal, monumental for me. She invited me to her house, like I was picking up the kids. She's like, hey, do you wanna come in? She'd been remarried, she had a new, brand new baby. Like I, I literally, we had like restraining orders against each other, that's how crazy it was. So the fact that I was like going over to sit down and talk was like mind bending, right? So I'm sitting in there in her house, holding the new baby, I snap a little selfie, why? Because that's what I do and I like taking pictures and sharing all that shit and cool. But up to this point, what was Facebook for me? Probably what it is for most of you. Just this thing, right? You just share rainbows and kittens and memes and God bless fucking whatever quotes and shit like that, right? That's what it was for me. So I snapped this picture, fast forward to that night, I pick my kids up, we're at the house, my kids are getting ready for bed, they're brushing their teeth, and I put this post up on Facebook and I shared this picture. And I was like, here's the deal. Like, I'm an asshole, and I've been an asshole, and I've said a lot of dumb shit, and I realized that like I made the bed and I have to lay in it. That was it. There were no buts. There were no asterisks, there were no, well, she said, it was like, look, like I'm holding this child that's hers, this is massive, because this pit that I made for myself and where I ultimately brought myself back to, and what I created with her, and I just flat out said that I was an asshole. Not thinking anything of it, I went to bed, 30, 40 likes, cool, great, blah, 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 I woke up. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, it had 1K. You ever had a post have like a thousand likes? Like it was my thing, I was like, what, the, what is this? Like I didn't even know what this was, like what, what does this mean? And every hour, for the next 48 hours, over 2,000 people liked this post. And ultimately this post went on to have over a million likes. It's been shared, the last week lost count of about 1.1 million shares. I had multiple calls from advocacy agencies, men's groups, women's groups, who the fuck are you, how do we interview, how do we talk to you, like you're like the greatest thing ever. And I'm like, dude, I just, I just told the truth. That's all I did. So it's interesting, it's kind of this newfound thing, these people are like, dude, you seem to know a lot. You seem to be wise. And you know, I'm kind of like, yeah. I'm pretty fucking wise. What do you want to talk about? You know what I'm saying? You got the little, air, the little thing. Here's what I learned, friends. And this is what I want to share with you tonight. I came up over the last two and a half years. I've got over 100 million views of Facebook videos. I've never spent a dime marketing. Like tens of millions of shares of posts. I just share regular shit. I like to shoot guns, I like running around with my dogs, I like being up in the mountains. I mean, I'm not really that much different than most of the dudes in here. We'd probably sit down, have a beer, and have a good time. Hell, if I can do that with Dan, I can do that with anybody, right? Here's what I learned. 
The world is fucking starving for truth. Starving for truth. We hear this word, we use it kind of funny, authenticity, right? There's all these books written and all these coaches like, authentic, authentic. What the fuck does that even mean? The world is starving for truth because all of you have really tough thumbs, right? Every single one of you, because everybody here is on Facebook. So what are we doing all day long? Flipping, flipping, flipping. Half of you doing it right now. Doom, doom, looking through shit. And what's, what's the majority of what you see? What's the majority of what you see? Why do you flip past 95% of your friends? Why? It's bullshit. Why? Highlights. What's real? What's authentic? What's real? What's authentic? Nobody even gives a shit anymore. Like, what's real and what's authentic? What I understood and what I came to create over the last two and a half years is a three-step. I don't even want to call it a step. It's basically three pillars of truth behind what it is that I've built in a social media revolution. I mean, I live 6,000 miles away, and you guys have seen my posts, like my posts. You know, it's, it's insane. It's literally insane to get messages from people all over the world saying, you have no idea how much that touched me. What I learned is this. Step number one, the, the, the most crucial piece of this, is to be real. What does this mean? Real is the truth. Step number one is real. Real is truth. Not your mom's truth, not your brother's truth, not your dad's truth, not your coworker's truth, not your boss's truth, not the truth you read on CNN, not the truth that you flipped through and saw through your social media feeds or your Instagram posts or whatever. What's your fucking truth? What, what burns inside of you? What do you fucking believe about God, about relationships, about the universe, about money, about sex? What do you believe? Not the shit you've been told, not the shit that you've read, not all the bullshit you've been fed since we were little kids, we're like programmed little robots. Do this, do this, don't touch this. What do you fucking believe? What is your truth? Because my truth is not your truth. My truth is not your truth. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I shared my truth, which was I was an asshole, and people were like, they weren't right, going, yeah, dude, you were a dick. Yeah, yeah, let's just like this, share the shit out of this so we can make this guy like kill himself with all of his guns, right? It resonated with people. Why? Because we're fucking starving for truth. You share bullshit. Let's call it what it really is. I bet 95% of you would stand up right now if I asked you how much of the, the stuff that you share is fucking real and authentic. Most of what you share is bullshit, isn't it? Why? Because you don't want to piss anybody off. Why? Because you don't want mom to get upset. You don't want your brother to freaking call you like, dude, what the hell, man? You can't talk about that shit. So what do we do? We result to sharing bullshit. Your truth is the most powerful lead generator, like mate finder on the planet. I don't give a shit what you believe or not. It's your truth. And I'm cool with it. I legitimately, genuinely don't give a damn if any of you like me. Am I out of time? You giving me a signal? I legitimately do not give a shit if any of you like me. Let me explain this to you. I threw out some shirts. I'd have a beer with any of you. I'd sit down and change a flat tire and do whatever, but I don't give a shit if you like what I post or not. I don't post what I post on Facebook. I don't share my truth to try and sway your mind. I share what I share so the people that think the way that I think, believe the way that I believe, and feel the way I feel, know that they're not alone. Step number two, raw. You gotta be real and you've gotta get raw. What is raw? Raw is the emotions. Raw is your fucking emotions behind something. Last summer, I was walking around with my kids. We were walking down to the beach in North Carolina. I grabbed my, uh, my phone. In the US, there was this big thing happening where the Confederate flag, you guys might have heard about it, some doctor shot a lion and everybody freaked the fuck out because some lion in Africa got shot. So everybody was like wanting to kill this doctor because he shot a lion and everybody's like, oh, the Confederate flag, it's racist and we gotta take it down. And I grabbed my phone, I'm like, look, here's the deal, motherfuckers. There's been white and black people walking in and out of government buildings for the last 50 years in the South that have not given a shit about this flag. Now Fox and CNN and ABC tell you to freak the hell out, so what do you do? You freak the hell out. And honestly, all of you that changed your profile pictures to a fucking lion, you didn't give a shit about a lion last week. 
Nobody cared about a lion last week, yet now you're like, the lions, let's save them all. Yet you didn't do a donate a fucking dime. I did this four minute post and shared my truth, my, my, my reality, my, my emotions behind this. As of today, it's, it's got 15 million views, 15.1 million views on my personal Facebook and it's been shared over 100,000 times in different media outlets. It's probably close to 100 million views just on this one video. I didn't give a shit if you like lions or not. I don't care if you like lions. I don't care what your position of the flag is. It's me. If you like me, cool. If you don't like me, cool. How, how good would this be for your businesses as entrepreneurs, as business leaders, to not have to worry about who's in your tribe, to not have to, to coddle and suckle everybody and make them all feel warm and cozy, to know that you share your truth and your authenticity. If you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, awesome. I don't delete people from my Facebook, why? Because if you don't like me, fuck off. Why are you so concerned about appeasing the mass? Why are you so concerned about having to sell every single client the same shit? Don't. Share your shit, your truth, your authenticity. And guess what will happen? You'll do what I've done over the last two and a half years. Build a 200,000 plus person tribe, have hundreds of millions of views of your videos and build a multi-million dollar empire teaching this shit. Step number three, be relevant. Real, raw, relevant. Relevant is your why. Your why. Why is this, why, why? Why is this important to me? I shot that video on the beach in North Carolina because I realized that I started a company called Lions Not Sheep and there's a lot of fucking sheep on this planet. Do you agree with this? And that millions and millions of sheep like all of a sudden started freaking out about dumb shit they didn't care about yesterday because somebody told them to. It's not what I want. It's not what I'm interested in my life. It's not how I want to build my business. Real, raw, relevant gets you one thing, my friends. Results. Real, raw, relevant. Stop fucking lying. Tell the truth. And you will get the most massive, incredible results you've ever seen in your entire life. Thank you very much. First of the Americans, what did you think? Good?